Hey folks, welcome back to another video. You join me and the boy at uh, our little bit of sheltered crag that is out the way of people and weather and such like. He's down there half asleep. Won't see him in today's video. He's out of shot. Um, it's a bit of a chilly one today. If you saw the previous video or any of my Instagram and stuff like that, you'll see we have had a bit of snow lately. It's been pretty, pretty Baltic compared to what we're used to here in Spain. It's like a one in 40 year thing, apparently. Um, but what it means is it's fresh and there's, although it's stopped snowing now, it's quite a nice day. Really. It's quite a lot of seepage everywhere. So a bonus day off, uh, which is good for my fingers because I've got a couple of little niggles on, t on two of them on my left hand. So a bit of rest is, uh, is quite welcome actually. I'm pretty thankful that uh, I managed to tick my project the other day, which is 8A plus called Nueve Zeta. Um, thankful because it's the first of my grade uh, at 8A plus and uh, thankful just because I really enjoyed it as well. Um, but also, one of the reasons I managed to stay quite mellow during the working process and sometimes I struggle with that, get a bit stressed about it all and have some sleepless nights thinking through moves in my head and stuff like that. Um, but one of the reasons I managed to stay pretty chilled is I knew I had plenty of time. But actually, uh, I didn't have as much time as I thought because of this snow. We've lost quite a few days to it. I didn't know that was coming. So I'm really happy I ticked it. Otherwise, that would have been playing on my mind if I still hadn't got it. I also want to say uh, thank you for all the support as always. I just thought I'd say at the beginning of the video because people switch off at the end, uh, understandably so. So thanks for all the people who have used the buy me a coffee link, click the like button, subscribe button, found us on Insta and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. All the support, just massively appreciated, honestly, it really is. Today's video though, uh, more importantly, um, is all about a cordlet and the fact that it is 2021 now, can you believe that? Um, and is there still a place for a cordlet in climbing? Um, and and it's, yeah, it's an interesting question really. In the UK, where I'm based, where I climb most of the time, I will very rarely do a route without my trusty 240 centimetre sling. And I use that for putting around big boulders, linking three bits of kit, two bits of kit if they're wide apart, all that kind of stuff. Nice and neat. Um, I'm not sure what they cost now. I guess relatively expensive compared to the cordlet cord. Um, but it sits on my high, so I rarely leave home without it. What makes up a lot of my belays are 120 centimetre slings, okay, uh, and these are both rated to a minimum of 22 kilonewtons, they're pretty strong, pretty light, pretty neat, I love them. The cordlet though, I've got a bit down here. It's cheaper, right, but is it better? Uh, it's probably just different is the answer. Um, this is just one that I've plonked on the floor and you can see one of the problems with cordlets is they can get a bit twisted and tangled, but a long sling, because you can get even longer than 240, let's say a 480, they seem to get twisted and stuff even more. I'd never really carry a 480. I find them a bit of a pain in the butt. This cord though, um, if you're gonna make a cordlet and you've never really looked into it before, I'd recommend going for seven millimeter cord and seven meters of it, okay? And in somewhere like Decathlon, where this is from, that'll cost you about eight pounds, so pretty cheap really. A seven millimeter cord of this brand is rated to 12 kilonewtons, so that's less than the sling immediately. If you go down a bit skinnier to six millimeters, which some people do, you're down to nine kilonewtons. So there's a bit of thought required there. You're going to lose some strength through tying a knot in it as well, as you would a sling and everything else as well. But you will lose perhaps even up to 50%. Depends what knot you use, so you'd be unlikely to go fully that far. But keep that in mind. We are going to win some strength back potentially by the way we use the cordlet in a loop form. So that's worth keeping in mind as well. As is the fact of that... <laughs> It's not just about how strong this bit of cord is, it's the big picture. I'm really keen to stress that. You know, we've got loads of other stuff in the system as well. These nuts, these particular nuts are sort of larger sizes, so they're all 12 kilonewtons or more. The carabiners, 24 kilonewtons or more. What's the, probably the weakest part of the system? Well, definitely on this setup, it's the rock. I don't know. There we go, if you can hear that, it's a bit hollow. I've only set it up, obviously, for the camera, but it is the big picture, so don't get too sucked in. To all the minute details of everything. Obviously the stuff has to be strong enough, but big picture. Now, at the moment, this is just a bit of dangly string that's not of much use to me uh, as it is. So I'm gonna start off with uh, probably the most normal method of making a cordlet, which is to link the two ends together with a double fisherman. There's not. There's loads of videos on that on the internet, I'm sure. Uh, I will just zoom in in a second to one particular thing to think about, though. Uh, just get that neatly done. So I was distracted by a noisy quad in the background. And then, same on the other side. 
And like I said, we'll zoom in in just a moment. There we go. It's tricky to do this cold finger. This is why I come to Spain. I come for the warmth, not for the snow. Uh, now, the key bit here is the two bits as they join together and touch in the middle, those two strands there, they are sort of opposites. One goes one way, one goes the other way. So they butt up nicely. If you do them as mirror images, uh, it's not actually a double fisherman's really then, and they're, they're not sort of twists and stuff, so make sure you do it properly. And I've left a tail of like four fingers there or thereabouts, and that's I'm happy with that. And I tighten that up properly now. I'd sort of probably stand in it and pull it and tighten it that way, but you want that really snugged up. Now, you're going to just really use this as a normal sling now, because that's all it is, isn't it? It's just a massive sling. Um, so let's just join the two wide parts and do these up. I should probably get some self-lockers for this job. I'd save loads of time on videos. I can't bring myself to leave them undone though. I've got the join up there, out the way. If you don't get it out the way, you can guarantee it will be in the way. I'm not gonna go through every cordlet setup. There's just an inordinate amount of them. And the principles realistically are the same as we've done on other videos and using a sling. All the serene ideas, whatever sort of mnemonic you want to think about, but you know, equalizing, independent, all that kind of stuff. I could just join them now and equalize them with a figure of eight. What you'll often find with a cordlet it is often too long, okay? But that's part of the beauty is that it's flexible. So at the moment, that's too low. I couldn't really clip to it because I would be above it. We want it higher up. So there's an easy solution to that in this instance, which is just to do a bunny ears knot instead. So that starts off pretty much as a figure of eight, but then these two bits are gonna get looped over the top and they're gonna sit at the back as I tighten that up. There we go, get it all nice and neat and everything. And now what I've ended up with, four loops. Two for me, eagle-eyed will have seen I've got my uh, Petzl connect on. Obviously you can connect in a myriad of ways to this, but I could tighten that up, get myself snug on it and everything. And then in the other two loops, I can put my guide plate and do all that jazz. So that's quite nice. I like the fact it's two loops, so it's a bit of redundancy there. Uh, and I've got two each, so I, that, that's a good thing for that one. It could be that your two anchors are really close together. Put yourself uh, in the mindset of using bolts, for example, which is where this is much more popular. Um, and let's just uh, get that all neatened up. There we go. I'm going to use these two bits here because they're about the same distance apart as bolts. There's not actually many uh, any spots that I found that got two bolts at ground level around here, which is surprising really, uh, considering it's all sport, sport, sport. They don't have anywhere to practice, which we have in the UK a bit more. Um, I've doubled it up this time. Flip that in, do it up, bolt number one. Remember, get that join out of the way just to save yourself a headache in a minute. Bolt number two, clip it in. So we've now got loads of strands. Not sure what time it is, we'll find out in a second, three o'clock, I think. Um, pull them together, tie yourself a big knot, probably a figure of eight, but just depends on what length you want to get out of it. And we've got the same thing there, haven't we? Two for me, two for the guide mode, whatever combination you want, you know. Uh, but like I said, I do like the fact you're getting two and a bit of redundancy. That works really well, doesn't it? Other options. What you'll see a lot in some other countries, states especially, is the quad. We don't really use that in the UK much because, as I've said in other videos, we just don't get many bolted belays and it probably wouldn't be something I'd do normally on trad stuff. Limiter knot number one. Might need to adjust these in a minute so I'm not doing them super tight. Limiter knot number two, clip that in. We've got loads of redundancy by having loads of strands going up here, loads of strands going up there. I just need to roll that uh, overhand up a little bit there so I've got the space. There we go. Now what I've got is four loops down here. Again, two for me, he says, there we go. And then two for the guide mode. That's not a guide mode plate, that's just a carabiner. There we go, jobs are good. And a bit of space between them actually self-equalizing uh, a lot better than other setups. As soon as you've done a, like a figure of eight overhand or whatever you're gonna to do to equalize something, it's really unlikely to truly equalize those bits of gear, whereas this works a lot better. Um, that's one way of doing it. Downsides, yes, great, self-equalizing to all intents and purposes. If that bit does explode, then it extends and it goes whoop into there, so there might be a bit of extra shock involved, which is the main reason, really, for me, it's not something I'd use on trad by default, but on bolts, I really like it, okay? I, I do like the fact of having loads of strands going on as well. Now, there is another way of setting up 
your cordlet uh, as a usable thing. So I don't mean the actual setup. There's loads of ways of setting all these things up. It could be uh, that instead of joining the two ends with your double fishermen's, you're going to join them. Uh, well, actually, you're not going to join them. You're going to do a figure of eight in each one. So with my cold fingers, this is why I didn't do it up super tight to start with. A bit of prior planning there for a change. Uh, means it's easier to get undone. In each end, I'm going to tie a figure of eight with a sort of a four finger sized tail as well and get them dressed neatly and all that kind of stuff. Remember, you do this at the beginning of the route or at home or whatever, you wouldn't be doing this mid route, okay? Uh, same for the other setup as well. You don't wanna be doing that one handed because you've forgotten to do it or something. You just pull this bit of string out your bag. Same in the other end, okay? So you're gonna have loads of cord this time. Get it nice and neatly dressed, as I say. Oop. That's just proving why I'm much better in the sun and warm weather than in this cold, snowy stuff. There we go. I can't have a not improperly dressed though. There we go. And then what I do is, let's just use three for this one to show it's kind of uh, strong points, if you like. Get the other end clipped in the other one. We've got loads of flipping cord flailing around now, haven't we? And then you can get the middle of it, go into there. So you could actually use some pretty wide anchors with this one, couldn't you? pull it down to wherever you want it to be. Whatever knots you want to have, I'm gonna to have to do, I think, a bunny ear's knot here to get it the right sort of height for the, the, my imaginary setup. So bunny ears flips over the top. And there we go, pull, pull, pull. Get them all snugged up and everything so it looks like a proper knot. There we go. So again, four, two for me, two for the guide plate, that kind of thing. Downsides, well, it's a single strand there. It's a single strand there compared to the double strand and the double strand of the other setup. So that's a consideration for sure it is. Um, I'm gonna hold it there because it looks like it's more equalized properly and so I drop it there, it doesn't look so good. There's, like I say, loads of different ways of actually doing these belay setups. What are the advantages then of a cordlet? Well, okay, it's cheap, we like that. Super long, gives you some flexibility. Might be that, it's, let's say you're in the Alps and stuff and you suddenly have to retreat off a route. Well, you've got a load of tack you can cut up and leave round a block or anchors, however you're gonna leave it. You can cut it up and maybe you get a few abseils out of that. Um, so that's an advantage rather than having the slings which are perhaps uh, a little bit less flexible in that sense. So that's probably the main advantage, but when, when would I use a cordlet? Well, it's all about block leading. And uh, in the UK, as I've said, we don't really have a lot of long multi-pitch routes. Most of our stuff is three pitches, five pitches, something like that. So by default, we alternate lead. Mate comes up, they take over the leading, we swap, we swap, we swap. Block leading, whereby you do a few pitches each, makes more sense on longer routes when you can stay in the mindset of leading and the other person can chill out a bit, just seconding those pitches. Uh, so longer routes in the States, the Alps, that kind of stuff. So it makes more sense there. But equally, you know, in the UK, it might be that you are doing all the leading. Perhaps you're out with a novice mate or something, or your mate's just not really up to leading those pitches today because you picked a route that's a bit harder. It could be, from my point of view, uh, in a guiding sense. You know, it might be guiding a couple of clients up and along a route, and, you know, so I'm leading, leading, leading. So it does make sense that way. So there is a place for it. As with all these things, it's just another thing to think about. I kind of always think of cordlet as being a bit niche, but that's because I've come from that UK background where we hardly use them. If you were somewhere in the States on bolts and stuff, you probably use it all the time. And perhaps it's still niche, but you, you fit that niche. And that's the key, isn't it? It's just finding the right thing for the right application. Um, so if I was to go uh, you know, onto some bolted routes, perhaps I would use a cordlet. Uh, a setup and fine tune the length so it was great for putting into bolts, uh, belay, belay, belay after belay after belay, you know what I mean? So if you fit that niche, great. I think with climbing, it's just so great to have all these options, isn't it? And pick the right option depending on where you are, the route, the area, all that kind of stuff. So I hope that's been of interest, that video. As always, do fire away with any questions. You know, I'm happy to answer as best I can. Do remember that I've only shown you a handful of potential setups for the cordlet. There's loads of other ways of doing it. and loads more to read about on the internet. You don't have to clip in with the, the um, Petzl Connect. You can use the rope. Always loads of options.
Thanks very much for watching. As always, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do click that like button, smash the subscribe button, find us on Insta, find us on Facebook, use the buy me a coffee link, buy a sling mat and t-shirt, all that stuff that supports the channel. Massively appreciated. Once again, thanks very much for watching. More videos coming up very soon.